What's up everybody? This is Chris, aka Hellgaden, uh, with the Coalition Gaming Crew and uh, wanted to talk about a very popular topic and that's building a cheap gaming computer. A while back, I built a cheap gaming computer as an experiment at, for a birthday gift for my little brother. He's always been on spare parts and things like that and never really put too much money into his computer. So, so I decided to try to experiment with something and, you know, as a birthday uh, gift, it made sense to do it that way and I don't have to really risk anything. And, you know, there you go, it's a, it's, a, it's a cool setup and I got to learn some stuff and do some interesting things. Unfortunately, I did this a few months ago. I didn't have the, the foresight to record the steps or do anything like that. I got some pictures and stuff for y'all to see and uh, on the, I'll be talking about that a little more and showing you guys that. eBay can be a good place to find some good deals when it comes to cheap gaming computer upgrades. And that's what we're discussing today. It's going to be upgrades. If you already have existing stuff, maybe old stuff, and you're looking to upgrade into a new gaming computer or just something that can keep up a little better, this is what, we're, this is what, you want, what we want to talk about. Um, so, with that being said, eBay does have a lot of good deals and people tend to look at eBay for uh, retired server stuff. And that tends to work out uh, really well most of the time. Uh, what I get into that is, is uh, there are videos online and other information where people take old socket 771 Intel Xeons and they do stuff with that. They'll overclock those uh, with the X5470 or put dual X5470s for an old school dual, dual CPU 8 core system. We can go a little newer than that and still have a, have a good deal, still make a good, a, a good come up on all that. What I had found on eBay when I started looking was an HP Z400 workstation setup. Now it's similar to how a server setup would be, but it uses uh, similar components to that. However, it's still more or less used and designed uh, for a desktop, and that was the format. It was a full ATX desktop setup. Um, didn't come with a backplate, kind of had to get a little creative there. Uh, but uh, and it also didn't come with the cooler. I reused that as well. Fortunately, I had a, a Hyper T4 from the pre-existing system that, my, that I had put together for my little brother that was able to transfer over, no problem. Anyways, uh, it's a Z400 mainboard, came with 6 gigs of RAM already on there in triple channel, and it came with a Xeon W3550 processor. If you want to make that equivalent to an i7 of that generation, it was about the same as an i7-950, which is still pretty good performance even by today's standards. So it worked out pretty well. Um, as you can see in some of these pictures here, it, it, it did take a little creative stuff to do with it. Uh, I couldn't quite exactly get all the headers right, but I got the power header, and that's really the most important one. The LEDs that go with it didn't quite line up, um, but as a functional unit for gaming, it worked out. The previous system that my little brother had, that I had worked on for him, was hand-me-down parts. It had a, a GeForce 560, fortunately it was a 2 gigabyte card, and that came in handy later on. Um, it was a Core 2 Quad Q6600. I had previously, previously tried overclocking that processor, but it was a B3 stepping. Couldn't really get it past 2.8, and it didn't want to be too stable at 2.8. I tried really hard to get that to 3 gigahertz at a at 1333 front side bus, wouldn't go. Uh, I had switched up to a slacker one for my own computer, and that slacker one got to 3 gigahertz, no problem. Anyways, uh, left that at stock 2.4 gigahertz, it was on an Asus P5Q SER uh, motherboard, and it had 6 gig of DDR2. That DDR2, eh, worked out for the most part. Played Battlefield 4 in about uh, 30 to 40, 50-ish frames per second range, on medium settings. His monitor is not that hard to, for a graphics card to push. It's 1440 by 900. And uh, overall, it was barely keeping up. But now he wanted to join us in playing The Division and playing uh, uh, Rainbow Six Siege. And definitely with Battlefield 1 coming up, that computer just was not gonna cut it. And uh, even Windows 10 fully upgraded, it was great as a media computer, just used general use and things like that, and some light gaming at this point. But this new setup was pretty much necessary to bring him in back into modern times for us. So he can be part of the group, and, you know, he's one of the guys that, uh, that, that helped form our LAN parties originally. So he's pretty important to me. Obviously he's my brother, so he definitely is important to me. <laughs> uh, man. So, 
uh, I got it all together. It turns out that there's a little hitch with the Z400 main boards or motherboard system is that they use a proprietary motherboard connection. It kind of sucks, honestly, that they do that because you can't just plug in a regular 24 pin power supply and it works straight away. It just doesn't go. It won't turn on if you do that. Um, as far as mounting it into the, into the case, no problem, not a big deal. Don't be dumb like me and miss a few standoffs that cause shorting that made you want to pull your hair out and it wouldn't turn on. Figure that out afterwards, but you know, it cost me some time. Anyways, so I found a way as for some other people, from some other people, I found a way that, uh, that uh, there was a, an adapter that you can use an ATX 24 pin extension, move some pins around and you can make an adapter to make a regular power supply work with that. You wouldn't, you didn't have to st stick with the, the weak old HP stock power supplies that came with them, or had to buy the expensive 600 watt version. You can just put your own power supply with this adapter. There'll be some pictures here, as you can see. Um, and it wasn't that much work. It took me about an hour. If you, if you had the right tools, you can probably do it in less time. Or if you wanted to use uh, butt connectors, uh, I forget what they're called. I believe they're like little splitters where you clamp one wire and it has another wire coming out of that, those would actually make the job really quick. Or if you just wanted to solder it up, if you had the skills for it, you can do all that. I could have done all that, I just wanted to do it the hard way to see how long it would take me. And to try to figure it all out. Now that I know, I can do it all the other easy ways a lot quicker. So with this little adapter made everything easier to use with the computer. And uh, power supply worked. Uh, I had I didn't have to fumble around for different connectors for for the graphics card or anything else. It was all there with this modern power supply, even though the motherboard and processor setup is a little older. When we got this setup into Windows 10, everything ran great. Everything recognized. Six gigs of RAM is okay, but on DDR3, it's definitely going to perform better than on DDR2. We threw on Battlefield 4. We threw on Rainbow Six Siege. And I had my reservations on the graphics card. For the 560 to me, at this point, it needs to be upgraded. And I know he's thinking about that, and we're gonna work on something, probably get him a 1060, if not an RX 480. It should be more than enough for what he wants to do. Anyways, I was really surprised about the performance that all these upgrades gave with those games. Battlefield 4, 60 frames per second, V-Sync lock, no problem now. Um, the uh, Rainbow Six Siege, yeah, it plays great. It doesn't run out of VRAM. It doesn't. It works great. It's not the highest setting. It plays on low, um, but it still runs good, and it's, he does well in the games with it. Before, it probably wouldn't even have a chance with the old setup. But and I never actually got to install it back then. He didn't want to venture into that until we had a, a system that could actually run it. So he didn't want to be disappointed. You know how that goes. Anyways. The uh, the game ran great. I was really shocked about that. The 560 has longevity more than I thought it did. But I have a friend, two friends actually, who have i5-2500 systems with a regular 560 as well. The one guy, he has only one gig of VRAM on his card. And I did mention that the two gigs did help in, er, earlier. This is where it comes in handy. Newer games use a lot more VRAM, especially the Division and Rainbow Six Siege. Actually, Siege especially, I don't know why, it just uses a lot of VRAM. My friend's computer running Siege with 2500 and 561 gig doesn't do too well. It kind of lags out and things like that. To me, it's running out of VRAM and having to load and, and process and load and process and, and it's just lagging for him. It's, it's almost as if it's just too much gain for that card. And it might be. But with the 2GB card, it's like the processor now, the GPU has enough power to run through the game and it has enough space on the VRAM to, to process everything, get everything everything rendered uh, in time without any lag. It, it really helps. That two gigs of VRAM was super good, uh, super good choice on that card. Still, it's time to, for an upgrade either way. That'll come down the line. We'll probably do another video for that. Anyways, I'm just really glad that this whole system worked out. The cost of this stuff, um, it was relatively cheap. He already had the graphics card, but the graphics card I got I don't know, I think it was like 70 bucks with the, pro with the, with the power supply, which was a Corsair semi-modular 700 watt deal. Got that from a friend, you know, if you know the right people, people that have stuff, if you got friends, they'll help you out. And that's where that came from. The, the motherboard and the, and the processor with the RAM on eBay, that was $100 shipped, and that's good. 
the case, my little brother got that from a different friend for 30 bucks. However, his existing case, we probably just wouldn't use that if he didn't get the deal on this on this mother uh, this new case. Whatever, and, and that's a Corsair Carbide 400. The old case was this old, uh, it was the, from the first computer I ever built that I handed down to him. It was, I believe it was a Chief Tech full tower. Yeah, it's, it's old, but it still works. And uh, we would, would just use that case. So, you know, that's keeping the cost low too. So we're looking at, what, what is that, 200, under $300 easily. And, and recent searches have found the motherboard kits for that Z400 system with, a pro with that same processor, sometimes faster processors, sometimes slightly slower processors, sometimes with the coolers and sometimes without, right around the $100 mark. So it's pretty consistent. If you look around, you can probably get a good deal on that too. And you can have the equivalent of the i7 from a few generations back. So it's definitely something that I highly recommend. A few things might not work as far as like LEDs and how you plug that in. Uh, you'll be able to find the power switch on the header on the motherboard pretty easily though. And uh, that's really the most important one. And making the adapter, as you can see from the pictures, is not that difficult. So if you have just a little bit of know-how as far as popping pins and, and moving things around like that, then you'll be able to take care of this, no problem. And if you don't, find a friend that does know how computers and, or electronics, and they'll help you out a little more. So the upgrades really did help, and I did mention the, uh, the Battlefield 4 Rainbow Six performance. I couldn't get some good video, video of that, but I did, did get video of it, and you'll see it, you, you'll see it here on the screen come up shortly. Anyways, though, so I did that stuff, and I also did a, a fire strike test on that. Well, since the graphics card didn't change, the score didn't change all that much, it did increase, but what's, what's really important, if you look at it, is the physics score. It went nuts. It's really good for a physics score. Um, and that physics score beats a lot of uh, AMD FX processors like the 8350 or the 6350 and stuff like that. And yeah, I know those aren't the greatest processors for gaming, and, but people still use them and they do pretty good. So we want to compare it that way. That works too. Uh, it's not that far off from like an i5 uh, or an older i7 as well. And even though it is technically an older i7, it's a really good physics score. A better GPU is all that's needed to bring the score up and then, you know, 100%, good to go. So, this is Chris, signing off, Coalition Gaming. I'll be back next, uh, next time with another video. I got my own stuff that I'm going to be upgrading. I'm going to go with the full AIO water cooling setup for the GPU and the CPU. And it's going to be interesting. I got to change cases for it too. It's going to be nice. I'll see you guys.